ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय भगवद गीता एज इट इज ट्रांसलेशन एंड कॉमेंट्री बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी प्रभुपाद चैप्टर नाइन ट्वेंटी सिक्स इट्स अ वेल नोन वर्स यू कैन चैन विद मी पत्र पुष्पं फलं तायम यो मे भक्त प्रयच्छति तदहं भक्तुपहृत अश्ना प्रयतात्मन ट्रांसलेशन इफ वन ऑफर्स मी विथ लव एंड डिवोशन अ लीफ अ फ्लावर a fruit or water i will accept it shila prabhupad's purport for the intelligent person it is essential to be in krishna consciousness engaged in the transcendental loving service of the lord in order to achieve a permanent blissful abode for eternal happiness the process of achieving such a marvelous result is very easy and can be attempted even by the poorest of the poor without any kind of qualification the only qualification required in this connection is to be a pure devotee of the lord it does not matter what one is or where one is situated the process is so easy that even a leaf or a little water or fruit can be offered to the supreme lord in genuine love and the lord will be pleased to accept it no one therefore can be barred from krishna consciousness because it is so easy and universal who is such a fool that he does not want to be krishna conscious by this simple method and thus attain the highest professional life of eternity bliss and knowledge krishna wants only loving service and nothing more krishna accepts even a little flower from his pure devotee he does not want any kind of offering from a non devotee he is not in need of anything from anyone because he is self sufficient and yet he accepts the offering of his devotee in an exchange of love and affection to develop krishna consciousness is the highest perfection of life bhakti is mentioned twice in this verse in order to declare more emphatically that bhakti or devotional service is the only means to approach krishna no other condition such as becoming a brahmana a learned scholar a very rich man or a great philosopher can induce krishna to accept some offering without the basic principle of bhakti uh nothing can induce the lord to agree to accept anything from any one bhakti is never causal the process is eternal it is direct action in service to the absolute whole He a Lord Krishna having established that he is the only enjoyer the primeval lord and the real object of all sacrificial offerings uh reveals what type of sacrifices he desires to be offered that's very interesting that can that's the last verse of the fifth chapter prashila prabhupad connects that here uh That's an interesting point. See, I must have read this so many times, but that didn't click with me before. That's why you have to read again and again because there's always more to understand. So, continuing, 
If one wishes to engage in devotional service to the Supreme in order to be purified and to reach the goal of life, the transcendental loving service of God, then one should find out what the Lord desires of him. One who loves Krishna will give him whatever he wants, and he avoids offering anything which is undesirable or unasked. Thus, meat, fish, and eggs should not be offered to Krishna. If he desired such things as offerings, he would have said so. Anda, anda matsya mangsa jome bhaktya prayachati. He doesn't say that. He would have said. Uh, instead, he clearly requests that a leaf, fruit, flowers and water be given to him and he says of this offering, I will accept it. Therefore, we should understand that he will not accept meat, fish and eggs. Vegetables, grains, fruits, milk and water are the proper foods for human beings and are prescribed by Lord Krishna himself. Whatever else we eat cannot be offered to him since he will not accept it. Thus we cannot be acting on the level of loving devotion if we offer such foods. In the third chapter, verse 13, Sri Krishna explains that only the remains of sacrifice are purified and fit for consumption by those who are seeking advancement in life and release from the clutches of the material entanglement. Those who do not make an offering of their food, he says in the same verse, are eating only sin. In other words, their every mouthful is simply deepening their involvement in the complexities of material nature. But preparing nice, simple vegetable dishes, offering them bef before the picture or deity of Lord Krishna and bowing down and praying for him to accept such a humble offering, enable one to advance steadily in life, to purify the body and to create fine brain tissues which will lead to clear thinking. Above all, the offering should be made with an attitude of love. Krishna has no need of food since he already possesses everything that be, yet he will accept the offering of one who desires to please him in that way. The important element in preparation, in serving and in offering is to act with love for Krishna. The, imp <coughs> the impersonalist philosophers who wish to maintain that the absolute truth is without senses cannot comprehend this verse of Bhagavad Gita. To them it is either a metaphor or proof of the mundane character of Krishna, the speaker of Bhagavad, the speaker of Bhagavad Gita. But in actuality, Krishna, the Supreme Godhead, has senses and it is stated that his senses are interchangeable. In other words, one sense can perform the function of any other. Angani yasya sakalendriya vritti manti pashanti panti kalayanti chirantiyanti. This is what it means to say that Krishna is absolute. Lacking senses, he could hardly be considered full in all opulences. In the seventh chapter, Krishna has explained that he impregnates the living entities into material nature. This is done by his looking upon material nature, and so in this instance, Krishna's hearing the devotee's words of love in offering foodstuffs is uh, wholly identical with his eating and actually tasting. This point should be emphasized because of his absolute position. His hearing is wholly identical with his eating and tasting. Yes, so Srila Prabhupada states the same thing, again, to emphasize it. Only the devotee who accepts Krishna as he describes himself without interpretation can understand that the supreme absolute truth can eat food and enjoy it. Patrang pushpang palang tauyam yome bhaktya prayachati tadahang bhakti upaharitam ashnami prayatapmanaha if one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, a fruit or water, I will accept it. There are several verses in the Bhagavad Gita which clearly establish the sweetness of bhakti, the uh, love that Krishna feels for his devotees and the love that the devotees feel for him. 
and that this is the supreme process. Of course, Krishna does also speak about karma, the, the, the paths of karma, jnana, and yoga, but he establishes very clearly that bhakti is the supreme process. He is the supreme person, all are subordinate to him. Uh, for the jiva to simply uh, love Krishna is the perfection of the jiva's existence and the path of all auspiciousness for him. Unfortunately, uh, those who have chosen to be unfortunate, they uh, cannot recognize this and they take Krishna's instructions on karma, jnana and yoga to be the essence and thus they miss the point which Krishna wants to bring everyone to, that everyone should perform bhakti in love for him. Yeah. <laughs> now, Krishna, when he was speaking Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna, uh, at the same time that he's telling Arjuna that if one offers me with bhakti, with love and devotion, leaf, flower, fruit and water, I will accept it. At the same time we can, that he was saying this, we can understand that Krishna was accepting so many offerings because Krishna is present everywhere. There are many universes, there's the spiritual world and just like right now, for instance, we, we can't say exactly where, but d undoubtedly some devotee, even somewhere in this world, is offering to, some food to Krishna. And what to speak of the many universes. So while we're talking about it, Krishna is accepting the offerings of his devotees. So that's going on eternally. Krishna, he eats a lot because there are many devotees who are offering to him. He doesn't get indigestion because he has a very strong appetite for accepting the love of his devotees. In this world, we are devoid of love, especially in Bangalore, it seems. There's, there's not even, there's not even much semblance of material love, what to speak of real, pure, transcendental love. In Bangalore, it's just work, earn money and what else is there to do? On a Saturday night maybe go to a pub. It's a horrible life here. Horrible life. There's, no, there's not even, even we don't see material love, what to speak of pure transcendental love. Uh, so people's uh, capacity to love is limited. Sometimes we hear in history, Srila Prabhupada said there was one Nizam in Lucknow who had 20,000 begums, not vegetables, wives. So, but he can't love them all. Maybe it's 2,000. I can't, anyway, it was more wives than anyone here has. So, Srila Prabhupada gave that example that he would maybe a few wives he would have regular contact with and the rest are simply sitting in their harem and being neglected. That wasn't the case with Krishna when he had six, he was here with 16,000 wives and he fully interacted with every one of them. And Srila Prabhupada uh, when he took up this question of 16,000, that seems to be a lot of wives. That's, that's so many. And Prabhupada said, well, why only 16,000? He's the Supreme Lord. He, for him, 16,000 is a very small number. So he has many, many, many devotees. An Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai, we say regularly. They're unlimited devotees. And Krishna is able to fully reciprocate with every single one of them. So, uh, Krishna, he, he can accept 
the love. We can't do that. As jivas, we don't have the capacity to interact with many people. Some, some pseudo-spiritualists speak in a very vague way of we should love everybody. So, of course, we may do so in a general way. We may love everyone, but we can't, we are limited in the number of relationships that we can have. But Krishna isn't. Krishna personally interacts with everyone and he has, Krishna can do so. Krishna can, can have an intimate loving relationship with an unlimited number of living beings. We can't do that. But we can have an intimate, loving relationship with Krishna. And this is the point of the verse. Uh, of course, Srila Prabhupada in his purport, he also emphasizes that Krishna wants vegetarian food offered to him. But the point isn't exactly <coughs> that Krishna is in need of fruit, flower, leaf or water. That's not exactly the point. And that Krishna himself, he's asking for leaf, flower, fruit and water. You may say, well, you know, sarvata pani padam tat sarvato ksi, sarvato kshi shiro mokam. Krishna, your hands and legs, you've got plenty of hands and legs. You, you, that's what you say in Bhagavad Gita. Sarvata, his hands are everywhere. His legs are everywhere. He is. So, you know, just reach out and grab some mangoes off the tree yourself. Why are you asking me to offer you some? Krishna can provide himself any number of leaves, flowers, fruits or what. He gives the whole ocean. If, if Agastya can drink a whole ocean and Agastya is a jiva, then what can Krishna do? So, he can have any amount of water that he wants. But Krishna asks us to offer it to him and the point here is that Krishna is asking for love and devotion. That's the point. Krishna, although he has unlimited devotees, he wants those who have come to the position of not loving him, that you come and offer some leaf, flower, fruit and water also. Mother Yashoda, she's offering so many items to Krishna. Radharani is cooking for Krishna. You also, Krishna is not in any lack. If, if He's already being fed in so many ways. He's not lacking any food. He's not lacking our love. He's, uh, But he wants that we should love him also. And that is for our benefit. If we love Krishna... That is the meaning of our existence. That is the perfection of our existence. If we don't love Krishna, then whatever else we do is simply useless. Simply useless, as Srila Prabhupada states here. You may, even uh, we may be in devotional service, and we may think, well, I'm doing very well. I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm been in the movement for 20 years. I'm quite senior, and... Uh, you know, I'm Brahmin, and when, when there's an Abhi Sheikh, I stand right up at the front and everyone can see me, and uh, I'm doing pretty good. But, these things cannot satisfy Krishna, nor they can they even satisfy ourselves. If, if there's actually an attitude, as Srila Prabhupada states several times in this purport, if we actually love Krishna, that is the perfection of our life. It's not the perfection of our life to be uh, a great philosopher or a, or a highly placed in the Krishna consciousness movement, uh, to be a, a Brahmin. None of these things matter. So we have to see, actually, are we developing love for Krishna? Savai pung sang paro dharma yato bhakti arthoksajaya haituki apatiyata yayatma suprasiddhati. Only that can, f can fully satisfy us if we actually develop pure, unalloyed love for Krishna. P 
pure unalloyed love for Krishna means we never forget Krishna. We can't forget Krishna. So we have to ask ourselves, do we ever remember Krishna? We're chanting Hare Krishna, but are we, are we remembering Krishna? Those who are in love, they can't stop remembering Krishna. Uh, but if we don't have, of course we have to perform sadhana, but the result of that sadhana should be that we actually start to think of Krishna, love Krishna. Otherwise, uh, whatever we do, dharma svanushita pumsa vishvaksena katha suyaha nodpadi adhyadiratim shrama eva kevalam It's all a waste of time. Now it's not that our sadhana bhakti is a waste of time, but we should remember what the goal is, what Krishna is pointing us toward. Krishna is asking for our love and devotion. Srila Prabhupada here translates bhakti as love and devotion. Now, uh, another word used here is prayatatmana. And uh, Srila Prabhupada has uh, translated this term uh, prayata atmanaha from one in pure consciousness. Srila Vishwanath Charivar Thakur explains that this means that we should follow the rules and regulations. We should be, the offering should be done uh, in a manner, in a prescribed manner, according to Shastra. It should be offered properly in Archan. Now he may say, well, the feeling of bhakti, the love of Krishna, that's the most important thing. But Krishna gives a system by which we can offer to him. We hear s- stories about, for instance, the uh, the wife of Vidur offering Krishna banana skins, which Krishna eats. We hear about Vangshidas Babaji offering without any uh, proper system of archan. That is for for devotees who are fully wrapped in love of Krishna, for those who are aspiring to come to that stage, Krishna gives the rules and regulations of devotional service. Because love of Krishna is not a matter of simply saying, well, I love Krishna. Uh, but love of actual love of Krishna is possible or it, it happens on the platform of not loving anything else. That's called ananya bhakti. When we don't have any diversion to anything else. Now it's relatively easy to say, I love Krishna. <clears throat> but actual love for Krishna means that we're not aspiring for anything else. We, we have no other interest. Other interest that is not love that is, then that, that means there's material desire. So this is uh, described in this very important statement from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. What is the what is the difference between actual love of Krishna, genuine love of Krishna, and material desire? So that is described. Atendriya priti vancha tare bale kam Krishnendriya priti icha dhare premanam. If we are thinking how I will be satisfied, that is called material desire. And that binds us in this material world. That causes us to repeatedly take birth and again to die again and again in this material world. Punarapi jananam, punarapi maranam. That, what is the cause of that? Material desire. And when we're only desiring to serve Krishna's transcendental senses, that is called love. So this offering of uh, tabla practice, no? This offering of food to Krishna, that means to satisfy Krishna's transcendental senses. 
with the desire, let me offer this so that Krishna will be pleased. So there are various rules and regulations that have to be followed. Actually the best, nowadays, especially in the cities, we're accustomed to purchasing vegetables. And actually even in the villages now in India, people are purchasing vegetables, which is crazy. They, they, they grow cash crops and then they buy vegetables. In the, they've got you know, land all around them, but they buy vegetables. So we're accustomed to buying vegetables, but the best, best of all is to grow the vegetables yourself and grow the vegetables and flowers with the idea that let's grow this very, very nicely. Then we'll offer this to, then cook that. And so from the very beginning, from planting the seeds, the idea is, yes, we're cultivating this field. We're going to grow these vegetables. Actually, Krishna, we, we say we are growing the vegetables, but it's Krishna. He, he is the, uh, he is nourishing the vegetables. Gama Vishya Chabhutani Dhari Ame Hamojasa. What is the rest of us? Push, Pushyami Choshadi Sarva Somo Bhutva Maha Rasatmakaha. Krishna says, I, as the moon, as the moon, I give the nourishment by which the vegetables grow. So it's actually, we say we are growing the vegetables, but Krishna grows them, but we can be the instrument in doing so. And so the vegetable, then we, with the whole meditation from the beginning is, let us cooperate with Krishna's nature so we can grow the vegetables and the fruit and the flowers and then offer that to Krishna. So we cook it very nicely with the, what does Krishna like to eat? And then we cook, and we offer that to Krishna. And as his humble servant, we, we take prasad, Krishna's prasad. Now that's a very different kind of mood to those who eat, uh, for sense gratification. Srila Prabhupada in this purport, he paraphrases this, this, uh, that, ye pachanti atma karanat, that they're, they're, Bhunjate uh, te tvagang papa. This persons who eat food simply for their own pleasure, they cook and eat for their own pleasure. They're simply eating sin. So eating, just eating for this, we, we eat, eat, but cooking and. And eating is meant to be an act of devotion for one who loves Krishna. We, we, uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur describes, uh, have you, who's read Chaitanya Charitamrita here? Who's been reading through Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita? Madhu Goranga, you're reading, you're also reading. So in Chaitanya Charitamrita, there are, there are several elaborate descriptions of the food, the feasts that devotees would offer to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And if we read that, we might start getting hungry and thinking, wow, sounds good. But the pure devotees, they describe this for the sake of other pure devotees, that other pure devotees can think, oh, how nicely Sarvabhambhata Acharya or Advaita Acharya has cooked for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They don't think, I'd like to eat that too. But they might think, I'd like to eat the remnants of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So similarly, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he describes all, so many nice foods that are offered to Krishna. Shukta shakadi bhaji nalita kushmanda dali dalna dugda tumbi dadhi mochakanda. So he gives the descriptions of so many nice foods. And then he goes on to describe that, uh, Yashomati Agya Paye Dhanishta Anito. What is the name? Shri Krishna Prasada Bunjay Radha Hoye Prita. So after Radha Rani cooked so many nice foods, and then uh, Yashoda orders one of her servants, Dhanishta, okay, bring Krishna's remnants, and then Radha eats that in food, and the, he, she eats the leftover, but she leaves some also, Lalitadi Shakigan Abhashe Shapai. 
Mane Mane Shuke Radha Krishna Gona Gai. Then the other gopis, they also eat the remnants and mentally, because they can't say openly, they praise the glories of Radha and Krishna. And then Bhakti Nautako, he concludes the song that, uh, <clears throat> Hari Lila Ek Mato Jaha Pramod Bhogarati Gai uh, Bhakati Vinod. She Bhakati Vinod. He, that Bhakti Vinod who is, takes pleasure in the pastimes of Hari, uh, he is singing this Bhogarati. So, it, it, <clears throat> The, the devotees, they take pleasure, they take pleasure in, they're saying, this Krishna has taken this, now I'm taking it, and then Radha takes it, and then the, the gopis take it. And so it, it's an act of, of spiritual bliss. Whereas most people, they just go in some pizza hut or McDonald's or something, and just eat it. And there's, there's no, I mean, even on the material platform, Mothers cook for their children and feed them with love. Does anyone remember that? <laughs> the older people. Nowadays, the mothers, they don't know how to cook. If they become mothers at all. <laughs> so, uh, so on the material platform, it used to be that you know, us from the older generation, we know about all these things, that mothers cook with the idea, the, yes, let my child be happy and let them be nourished and healthy. That's why uh, Yashoda, she calls Radharani to cook for Krishna because Radharani got the blessing from Durvasa Muni that whatever she cooks will be very tasty and very healthy. So Yashoda thinks, I want my son to have the best food. So she calls Radharani to cook for Krishna. So it's it's an act of love, offering food to Krishna. And then Krishna takes and we take the, the remnants. Now, uh, this is all very nice. <coughs> it is very nice. <coughs> uh, but actually, who can offer to Krishna food? Who can offer... We can offer Krishna if we actually love Krishna. We have to cultivate love for Krishna. That is the process of sadhana bhakti. Someone asked me that this morning. Can we, what was that? Can we offer food to Krishna? No. Can, no, but we can offer it if we can offer it via our guru who offers it to his guru, who offers it to his guru, and then it goes up through parampara to Radha, who offers it to Krishna. Are we qualified to offer anything to Krishna? No. But Krishna says we should offer to him. So we can offer, even though we're in the, uh, we're not in the completely pure state, but if we are offered, if we offer ourselves to Krishna, dikha kale bhakta kare atashamarapan. We offer ourselves, that's the meaning of initiation, we offer ourselves to Krishna. And then we become authorized to offer food to Krishna, at least in formal deity worship. So, if we offer ourselves to Krishna, Atma Samarpan, then Krishna will like to uh, accept food from us. And if we're in the process, Sharanagati, the process of offering ourselves to Krishna, uh, then we do so uh, in sadhana bhakti, via the medium of our guru. Now, uh, <clears throat> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given some uh, important instructions because, in this regard, because if we take Krishna Prasad, that is purifying. If we don't take Krishna Prasad, that is sinful. So either either we're becoming purified by eating, or we're becoming sinful. Either by eating, either we're going closer to Krishna or we're going away from Krishna. Now, uh, we often, I, I often hear that it's quite common that persons who consider themselves devotees who or who 
have undergone an initiation ceremony, who are therefore called initiated devotees, they go to restaurants, which are in which there's vegetarian food, or they purchase food from shops to eat and give to their family members. And they may say, well, in the restaurant we say, Sri Vishnu, Sri Vishnu, Sri Vishnu. And then it all becomes prasadam. But no, it doesn't work like that. Krishna says here, if one offers me with love and devotion. So, where's the love and devotion in, in going to a restaurant? What, where's the bhakti? What devotional purpose is served? We don't go to a restaurant to increase our bhakti, but we go to a restaurant to please our tongue, which is atendriya priti. That is mundane material desire. If we're only thinking of pleasing Krishna, then we cook for Krishna, we offer to Krishna, we ask Krishna to accept. That is not that, that okay, now uh, I said the mantras, and uh, okay, now it's prasadam. But we have to request Krishna, that we, we have to be in the consciousness of a devotee, that we are, our every thought, word and deed, kayena manasa vacha, is offered to Krishna. So this idea that, well, you know, uh, it, you can just go out to a, a restaurant and the main thing is to love Krishna. All these rules and regulations, that doesn't matter. The main thing is to love Krishna. But where is the love for Krishna if we're acting for our sense gratification? Because atendriya priti vancha tare bole kam. If we act for our sense gratification, that is mundane. That is mundane desire. And Krishna indriya priti icha dhare prema nam. So we may not be on the platform of pure love for Krishna, but we have to act on that, and that is. The, that is called the, the process of sadhana, is that we act, uh, we don't do act, we don't cultivate acting on the platform of sense gratification. You may think, well, this is very strict, it's too strict, that's only for sannyasis. No, this is for all devotees. If we want to be a devotee of Krishna, uh, we, it doesn't matter whether one's a sannyasi or a grihasta, one has to curtail sense gratification and act for the pleasure of Krishna, because that is bhakti. Uh, of course, grihastas, they have s some license for not acting as strictly as sannyasis do, but it's not that when, when at the time of death we have to remember Krishna. And if we're going to remember Krishna at the time of death, we're going to have to remember him in lifetime also. We're going to... It's not that if one is a grihasta, then one one's process of bhakti is easier. It's just that one is... Uh, <clears throat> one has a different station in life, but still bhakti means that we love Krishna and we... Love of Krishna means bhakti pureshanu bhava virakti aranyatra. That we love Krishna and we don't have any material attachments. Everyone has to work toward that point. So the, so uh, if we think, well, <clears throat> I'm initiated and I love Krishna and sometimes I go to a movie once a week. The rest of the time I'm doing bhakti. Uh, well, apart from when I'm watching TV and, uh, you know, most, a lot of the time, sometimes I do, but, but anyway, I love Krishna. But it doesn't work like that. We have to cultivate Krishna consciousness, which means being conscious of Krishna, being conscious of what Krishna wants, wants us to do, wants, how Krishna wants us to act. We cannot act on the platform of sense gratification and think that we can develop love of Krishna. It's simply a cheating process. It's like <coughs> uh, pouring petrol into a fire with one hand and water with the other. You'll get a, a lot of smoke, but you won't get fire. 
So we may chant Hare Krishna, but if we're deliberately, that's like pouring petrol into a fire. But if we're also deliberately cultivating activities of sense gratification, then we won't get the proper result. Krishna consciousness is a science. So uh, it's not enough simply to say, well, I love Krishna and therefore I can offer whatever I like to Krishna. Uh, garlic, onions, mushrooms, some bread bought from the store. And anyway, I love Krishna, so Krishna has to eat it. But no, Krishna doesn't have to eat it at all. Krishna is not at all obliged to eat whatever we may stick in front of him, or if we're too lazy to stick it in front of him, we may just offer it in our mind if we remember to do so. That, that's what happens when we, we get more and more slack. And we've, we see here in India, there's so many neglected temples. How did that happen? For centuries the worship was going on, following all the rules and regulations, and at some point someone thought, well, we don't have to follow the rules so strictly. And then they watered it down a little bit, and then someone else watered it down a little bit more, and then in the, end, in the end they said, well, what do we bother worshipping the deity for anyway? Let's go to Bangalore and get a job. And then the temple becomes closed down, or you'll find many temples, the pujari comes for 15 minutes in the morning and does puja and then goes off. And that's it, and the temple's closed for the rest of the day, and we wonder why Christianity is spreading. <laughs> uh, so this is what happens that you say well you know I, I am bhakti yeah okay I just love Krishna but there's no there's no endeavor to actually serve Krishna there's no seriousness or genuine sincerity and uh, the result is we just in the name of loving Krishna we actually do we, we, we're not we're not getting there. We're cultivating material desires and material attachments. So he may say, well, it's all right to eat this, that, and whatever you like. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, well, Krishna teaches us in Bhagavad Gita that if we take food which is not properly offered, then that is sin. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that, Bishoyer on the Kaili Malin Hoimon. If we eat food, which is even given by non-devotees, what to speak of, cooked by them. If we take food cooked by non-devotees, then the mind becomes polluted. And obviously, mon molin hoile nohe krishna smaran. And if the mind is polluted, then we can't think of Krishna. And uh, then... Uh, Krishna Smarana Hoyle Nishval Jivan and then our whole life is you completely useless and wasted. So we may think, well this is just a small thing, but it's not a small thing, it spoils our whole life. And we may think that we're in bhakti. Uh, but as Srila Prabhupada writes in the Moghasha Mogha Karmano verse. That there, he says that there are many persons who think that they're in Krishna consciousness, but actually they don't have faith in Krishna. So faith in Krishna means we have to follow what Krishna tells us. So, uh, on the one hand, if we, if we do surrender to Krishna, by, which in this stage of our practice means to follow the rules and regulations of devotional service, then we can actually begin to taste the sweetness of bhakti. For us, that is surrender. Uh, for Arjuna, surrender meant that he had to fight and kill. Krishna doesn't make it so difficult for us. But we do have to uh, surrender. It's not just some word, but we, we have to actually do some things. So Arjuna had to fight and kill. He, initially he didn't want to do that, but by doing so he pleased Krishna. Krishna doesn't ask us to do that, but he does ask us to do something, such as uh, this particular point, offer our food to him with love and devotion. We cannot offer restaurant food to Krishna. There's no question of love and devotion, because if we have love and devotion, we wouldn't even think of offering food cooked by non-devotees to Krishna. 
I mean, even previously in Indian culture, uh, a woman wouldn't even offer to her husband such food. She has to cook every day for her husband. She can't just buy something from a store. That, that, that means there's no love and devotion. So what to speak of Krishna? You, ha you have to cook for Krishna and offer it to Krishna. And then there's love and devotion. Otherwise there's not love and devotion. So, uh, if we do that, then we'll, if we do that consciously, that we're offering to Krishna, we want Krishna to please accept that, then there's a reciprocation of love. But it doesn't, it doesn't happen unless, unless we offer ourselves to Krishna and give ourselves to Krishna, then Krishna he doesn't give himself to us either. Yeyata mang prapadyante tangs tataiva bhajami aham. We have to make some effort in devotional service. Jot nagraha bine na preme na janmai preme. As Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that without sincere endeavor in devotional service, preme or love of Krishna doesn't arise. Srila Prabhupada emphasizes in this purport the process, that the process is very easy, but that doesn't mean that it's cheap. There's a difference between being easy and very cheap. It's an easy process, offer fruit, flower, etc. to Krishna. Uh, Srila Prabhupada writes here that there's only one condition, uh, one has to be a pure devotee. <laughs> so, you know, it's a, only one condition. It's a very easy process. We don't have to uh, stand on your head in the icy cold Himalayas for 300 years. Uh, you don't have to do anything. So just offer leaf, flower, fruit and water to Krishna. It's easy, but it's not cheap. That, does, that means that we have to surrender ourselves to Krishna. We have to actually offer our our whole, the goal of our life, the goal of our life has to be to please Krishna. It's not difficult to please Krishna, it's easy to please Krishna, but we have to be serious about that. Atendriya priti, if there's a desire to satisfy our senses, then we cannot please Krishna. So, this is what is being taught in Bhagavad Gita that Arjuna, he wanted to please his own senses. He had his own idea, what I want to do. He wanted to preach to Krishna. Actually, Krishna, uh, I've got a better idea. Uh, this fighting isn't very good. We should all join, we should all become pacifists and not fight. But uh, his idea was wrong. He had to submit to Krishna's idea. So we have to submit to Krishna's idea. Then, the, then the question of reviving our dormant Krishna consciousness can arise. We cannot cheat Krishna. We cannot take Krishna very cheaply. That, well, okay, I love you, but I don't love you so much that I'm going to just eat only what's offered to you according to the proper system. No, it doesn't work. You may think, well, you know, the Kamis, they're enjoying pizzas in Pizza Hut. What about me? But a devotee doesn't think like that. A devotee only thinks, what does Krishna want? What does Krishna want me to do? What is, what do I have to do to achieve that platform of love of Krishna? We should think like this and then do whatever is required to come to that platform. So, Hare Krishna. I thought that you may think, well, this is a very basic point. Yeah, it's a very basic point, but I'm told there are many initiated devotees in Bangalore who regularly go to restaurants and kami restaurants and watch TV and watch cinema. So I thought I should speak of this. Actually, there are no initiated devotees anywhere in the world who go to 
regularly go to restaurants and watch TV and cinema and all this because they may be initiated but they're not devotees. <laughs> they may call themselves devotees and think they're devotees but devotees means that you have to have devotion which is manifested in your activities. So Arjuna could have said, well, I'm not going to fight, I'm a devotee of Krishna. You know, everyone knows Arjuna, come on, everyone knows I'm a devotee of Krishna. So what do I need to follow Krishna's instruction for? I'm a devotee, I love Krishna. But Krishna said, if you want to love me, you've got to do what I say. So if I... If Arjuna, he can't get away with it, then what to speak of us? He couldn't cheat Krishna. What to speak of us? So, Hare Krishna. Any question, comment or protest about this can now be given. Protest means you're not a devotee, but if you want, you can try. Then they'll say, don't take initiation from Bhati Vikasrami. He's very strict. It's very strict. Take initiation from someone who allows you to do whatever you like. Then why have a guru? What's the point of having a guru if there's no discipline? What's the meaning of being a shisha without shasha? So you won't get the same result. You may think, well, you know, I'll... My guru, he never told me not to go to restaurants and all. He just talks about praying. Hari bowl, praying. But it's not such a cheap thing. Ah, yeah. Enjoying mentality even with prasadam. Yeah. Well, therefore... Some devotees, they are very abstemious. They eat very little and they take very... Uh, they don't... Well, Chaitanya Mahabharu said that, especially for renunciants. Bhairagi bhai grama kotha ana balibe jabe milebe ane bhalona kaibe o bhalona paribe. He said for the Vairagis... Uh, they should not speak worldly topics when they meet others. They should not eat well and they should not dress well. Srila Prabhupada writes in one purport that the, uh, the, the opulent preparations that are offered in Mahaprasad, that should be given to the Grihastas, not to the Vairagis. <laughs> So, uh, Srila Prabhupada does write in one purpose that the perfection of the sense of taste is to enjoy the food that is offered to Krishna. Thinking. But that, just like we find in Chaitanya Charitamrita, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he would say, when he was taking prasad, he would tell the dev devotees who are serving, you just give me the very simple preparations. Don't give me all the fancy preparations. But then the devotees would come and say, well look, this, this is, you should take this nice, very fancy preparation just to see how Krishna, the devotees have nicely cooked for him and how Krishna has nicely enjoyed. So you take pleasure in how Krishna has nicely enjoyed. So, uh, it's important to think that we're honoring prasadam. At the same time, we, we say that Krishna Bharadoya Mai Kodi Bari Jiba Joy Shaprasad on a Dilob on a Dilobhai. Shenamritapa. Well, let us take this nectar food and at the same time Radha Krishna Gunaga. And same time glorifying Radha and Krishna. So it's not that prasad is not enjoyable, but we should remember just like uh Lalitadi shaki gon obasheshwa pai mone mone suke radha krishna gonaga. The pleasure is that, oh, it's so nice and Krishna has enjoyed. So that consciousness we should try to cultivate. Rather than thinking that, oh, I cook such nice food and it's on the altar and just another, just another three minutes. <laughs> then I can enjoy. 
I know at least some pujaris in our temples. I don't know nowadays, but uh, I, I, there must be someone, someone in the world. But some pujaris, they would, they they have the personal rule which they made for themselves. Because the pujaris, they can get all the maha prasad. You want to be, you want to enjoy nice prasadam? You can be a pujari. But I know some pujaris have the rule that whatever I offer, I won't take. To restrict myself from offering and thinking, oh, now I can, just when it's offered. But I, I, I when I was, I, I used to cook daily actually for years in temples and traveling sankirtan. But uh, I didn't. Now I haven't cooked for many years because I thought I should concentrate on writing and speaking after taking sannyas. But. Uh, when I was first cooking, this was near to London, for Radha Gokulananda, uh, in the temple in London. So, uh, one devotee, he was an experienced cook, he told me that the, who is cooking for Krishna, they should take a little of every preparation, just a little of every preparation after cooking, just to see how it's come out so that they may if there's anything lacking, so in future they can do, uh, they can make sure it's up to the proper standard. And Srila Prabhupada often when he would come to a temple, he would ask for, bring the Mahaprasad to see how, what is the quality of the offering going on. So, it is a very elevated platform when, when we, uh, for us, from our perspective, it's very elevated to platform to take delicious food stuff offered to Krishna and not be attracted to eat from that perspective. So, uh, Srila Prabhupada in, in actually encouraged his disciples to take plenty of prasadam because for them, especially coming from the Western hedonistic background, that was their only sense gratification. So you could say that was dovetailed in Krishna consciousness. But gradually we should come to the platform of, of, uh, not wanting to take prasad just because it tastes nice. So there are many, uh, delicious foodstuffs which are offered to Krishna. So we're very happy to know and devotees bring, they bring, they'll bring. Here in Bangalore you'll be getting regularly, those who are, you'll be getting regularly the Tirupati, Ladus. You have to make so much noise. Remember, you're serving the Lord. He should, he should, he should hear sweet noises, not banging and crashing. We always have to think, when we're worshipping the deities, every moment, everything should be perfect for them. Yeah, anything else? Mm, yeah. Cold drinks and ice creams in shops. Better that we serve that is which is made by devotees. Otherwise, what's the point? The restaurants, generally, the, uh, the, we may think that the idea is to some income for the temple. But it's actually supposed to be prasadam, that people can get benefited by taking prasadam. So, there's no benefit in Coca-Cola or Thumbs Up or whatever the, the drinks are. Better, it's... It's... It's not the worst thing in the world to have soft drinks. Actually, soft drinks are very bad for health. <laughs> it's, but, but then all the... Everything is nowadays, practically. All the food is full of poison. But soft drinks... They're very bad. But uh, 
Yeah, better we can we can offer we fruit juices and limbu uh, pani, things like this. Buttermilk. Of course, people don't like. They think, oh, that's Indian. That's true. We want some. We want something Western. Ice cream, yeah? It's nice if devotees can make that and offer it with love to Krishna. Otherwise, milk products, they can be purchased and offered to the deity also. But I don't know what else they put in, all kinds of things. Vadilal is supposed to be vegetarian. They say that it's vegetarian. It's not? Hmm? Sorry? I can't hear what you... Not available here? Oh. Only in Gujarat, is it? Is it? Okay. Not available here, I see. Yes, yeah, someone else? Yeah. When we don't have much love in offering, we don't offer with tulsi leaves. Is that your proposal? Yeah, offering is with tulsi leaves, yeah. I don't understand the question. Is offering not complete? The, the offering is complete when we offer with complete love and with tulsi leaves. If either factor is missing, then it's not complete. Complete love, well, if we're on that path, then that's why we offer. We, we, we offer through the guru. And if your guru happens to be me, I don't have complete love, but I could offer to Srila Prabhupada, like that, who, he has complete love for Krishna. And he offers to his guru who offers to his guru. And this way, goes up through parampara. This way. Tulsi leaf should be there, yeah. And love should be there. But the, the beginning of love is that we act as if we had full love. Srila Prabhupada often used to give the example that in Indian culture, the the, the 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 children would be married. The boy would be maybe twelve years old, and the girl maybe five years old. So, what do they know about married life? But as the girl grows older, she goes to the husband. She knows this is my husband, and she goes and serves him, and she does what she's supposed to do, and naturally. The, because she does what she does, and then naturally a bond of affection develops. So in the same way, if we do what we're supposed to do, we serve Krishna, then naturally the bond of affection will develop. But if the girl, she's married, but she thinks, oh, I'm not going to go somewhere, or I'll, I'll go and serve, I, I'll go to someone else, I like someone else better, or why should I bother to serve my husband? I'll just go and eat in a restaurant. Then uh, then the love doesn't develop. We can understand even on the material platform what to speak of pure love of Krishna. So love means we're, we're, we have to act in a certain way. There are, certain, there are certain symptoms of someone who loves someone else. The wife loves the husband, she cooks for him. She doesn't just buy something from the, or phone up Pizza Hut and send, send in a pizza. And then he brings in the pizza and she offers it to the husband. So, that will, that will not be pleasing to him. Uh, what, what, 
if she cooks and offers to him, that will be pleasing to him. It might please his senses, but it doesn't please his heart. The pizza might please his senses, but not the heart. So in the same way, you can think that, well, I'll just buy anything from anywhere and offer it to Krishna. That won't please Krishna's heart. And he won't, he doesn't need to. He, Krishna doesn't need, the husband might need something to eat, so he might just eat that anyway. But Krishna doesn't need it to eat, so why should he eat? So, Hare Krishna. We'll finish that. Oh, you're going to show the video. I see. That's why this thing's going on here. What's this gadget here? I see. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, okay. It's a... Huh? Latest. Latest. It's broadcasting all the way to Mars. There's life on Mars. The scientists said there may be life on Mars, or maybe there was before. Hmm? Yeah, they're already in Shastra. Well, when I was a kid, there wasn't life on Mars. Nowadays there is, so scientists are making more progress. <laughs>